Hey yo, what's good? It's your favorite straw hat, Nico. I watch one of the most anticipated anime this season. I think it's called The Twelve Warriors. And it's pretty interesting. It did one of my favorite things I want from anime. Give me good storytelling, context, we can care about these characters, and what's going on. And if they do episodes like this, I can see myself calling this one of my favorites this season, or the best one this season. I haven't watched everything yet, so I can't make final calls yet. So the way it's looking, here's how I anticipate every episode. You focus on a particular, you know, zodiac sign and how that character is and you see their backstory and what made them the way they are and how their family influences them. And you see how they think and before you know it, you'll see what leads them to killing someone and them getting killed. That's the way I envision it. The reason why I say this, the boy has a pretty interesting story. So she basically finessed her way into being into the Zodiac War. It doesn't happen all the time, it's more like a tournament, and I think the conditions and rules are very interesting. But do me off about her backstory was, she wasn't always the way she is right now, but you can clearly tell she's at least familiar with certain people. She doesn't like the monkey, and I can kind of see why. If the monkey's planning, oh, okay, what we're gonna do, we're gonna let everyone come back to life. That's a waste of a wish. Because according to the referee, once you win, boom, you can make whatever wish you want. But I'm wondering this one thing, alright? So if y'all gonna die because it's poison, you wanna defeat the purpose of, you know, getting the antidote and then saying, okay, I wish everyone back alive. How about this? Everyone just like half kill the people, right? Then you just drink a sip of the antidote and drink another sip and then pass it on to other people. So that way, everyone can be cured if they're alive. But if they die, different story. I know the monkey's plotting something, but what threw me off most was, okay, so y'all really about to tell me. So in the middle of her explaining her plan to save everyone, why did the platform, or I mean the floor, under them just collapse? That's so weird. It was the most awkward timing. Then the rabbit, the one that claims to be a pacifist, he out here wilding, so I'm sitting like, this is kind of ironic. Is that his character? Like, he's saying he's not about killing, but he kills someone clearly, and he turns him into his friends. He a creep, but he may be the one to win it all because the boy is saying him and the ox are the biggest threats to her. But we're gonna see. And I'm thinking this: if the monkey somehow wins, I wouldn't feel happy unless she makes an interesting wish. Let's say the tiger wins. That'd be pretty dope. I'm sitting here like. So what's gonna happen, we're gonna see all their backstories, what makes them act the way they do, and their wish probably, because we need to know what their wishes are so we can pick what size to root for them. But the show doesn't wanna do that, not a big deal. Another way the show could do it, every episode, right? You see a certain showdown, and during the showdown, you can transition. Show us one character's backstory, the next episode shows the other person's backstory and see what choice they make. Like, do they wanna kill people, or are they trying to team up because it just 12 of them it means all they gotta do really, make an alliance, and then towards the end, trick the person you made an alliance with and kill them when make your wish, or or you can split the antidote. Because remember what the referee said, you get the antidote upon winning. He didn't say the antidote is only for one person, meaning if they really wanted to, and we don't know how big the antidote is gonna be, like in terms of size, maybe you can take one sip and that's enough to cure, you need the whole thing. We don't know the specifics yet, but the way the referee's acting, he knows what's up. Maybe he's new there or he been doing this so he knows exactly how stuff's supposed to go down. And maybe he rigged it so the platform, aka the floor, was gonna break on him because it's so random and then you're telling me they started fighting instantly? And the board knows most of the people so that made it interesting to me. And I'm wondering, what if the person we least expect actually wins a tournament? How would it go down? The way I see this show, they can easily have 13 episodes. So on episode 13, we see the aftermath of who won and what choices they made the, during the entire tournament. They can say, oh, I'm the monkey, I won, and here's what I'm going to do, and here's what I was doing, and here we go. How's we got, boom, pretty nice, right? Or maybe it could be, oh, I'm the tiger, I won, and here's what happened. Here's how everything looked from my perspective, and this is why I made the choice I did, and here's my wish, and here's what I'm doing after said tournament. Maybe we can see, like, their future kids or something because if we know this is a generation thing and you get picked based on your family and you post a keeping tradition of who wins and who loses, it's an interesting thing. Because about the boar, her father, he always won when he did it. That's why he forced her, trained super hard, leading her to break her sister so she have a chance of being in the Zodiac tournament to impress her father. So I'm wondering how do the other families handle it? So it's like you get it's like passed down like the next Zodiac sign 
from that same family. So it's like if you're in the tiger family, you're always going to be known as the tiger. But the thing is, no one has to tell you, A, this is what we expect from you. It could be just, okay, your tiger, your sibling lost, so you win. Here's what you do. And maybe the way their personalities are are based on the zodiac signs or, you know, the the assumption of what the signs are supposed to represent. But we're going to see how it plays out. Only thing that threw me off the most with this series was the art. It felt like I was watching low-key. You know, like when someone shows you like a stop motion or someone shows you like you know, someone has like a, you know, someone has like a little book, and they can flip it, and you can see like something moving as they flip. I feel like that's what I was watching because the outlines are very heavy. But over a while, but after a while, I got used to it. That's the only thing that threw me off the most about this show. But it did something I did not expect. I knew it was going to be hype, and it lived up to the hype because y'all know me. I love good characters. I love good backstories and showing me a reason to care about these characters. This show did it. I wasn't expecting much, but I can clearly see this one being a favorite this season. But who knows what the future holds. So my recommendation is, okay, give it a chance. And if it bores you within the first five minutes, maybe wait for three episodes to drop, then pick it up. Or if you really want to, right, after you watch, ask yourself, do you want to know how it all ends or not? Because I don't know if it has a light, man I don't know if it has a light manga or not, but I don't know if it has a light novel or have a manga that. I don't know if it has a light novel or a manga, but it may be. I have to, you know, go check again and see what's up with it. But hey, bruh, y'all already know the deal. If it's fire, I'll tell you it's fire. If it's trash, I'll let y'all know what's good. But hey, I don't know if you guys, what do you think about the anime so far you want to give? What do you think is the most likely ending? And what's the ending you don't want to see happen? Who's your favorite character so far? Let me know in the comment section below. If you did enjoy, y'all have to do. Subscribe, join my straw hat fleet, turn on notification bell on so you never miss a video the second it drops. Also, do your boy a favor, check out my Patreon so you can support me financially because I'm not going to monetize because YouTube right now, it's not the smartest thing to do unless you want to play around with, you know, your pennies. Share your favorite social media so I expand the fleet one step at a time. Check out my plays if you want more content like this if you're still hungry for more videos. Also, Follow me on Twitter, join my Discord, stay in loop with me, and you're good to go. I can say so much more, but my crew needs me. Thanks so much for watching.